From this video about interpreting formulas of basic exponential functions on Khan Academy. So if you're doing that one, that's this. Um, so we have an exponential function. Exponential functions generally fall into this form, where the unique part is that the exponent that you substitute in to make each point is the actual exponent. A is what we consider our initial value. and then b is our base. If we were to do like a geometric sequence or series, either one, we'll do a sequence here, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So you'll notice that we're doing multiply by 2 every time. So, and you could go backwards and find that ratio, 3 divided by 2, 16, or thir 2 divided by 16, 16 divided by 8, 8 divided by 4, 4 divided by 2. All of those give you 2. That is my common ratio, so I'd call that R. That's what the base is. It's just the common ratio over and over again. So in this case, the common ratio would be 2, and it'd be to the X. Now, in general, when we do this type of sequence, uh, we might say something like, okay, I'm going to start with the first number. That's my ace of 1, and then I'll say, okay, it's this. But in order to make it work, I have to do N minus 1. You may remember this from sequences, or you may not. If you don't, just zone out for a second. But I don't want to do n minus 1 in this form. I need to start somewhere. So all I'm going to do is just start out with, okay, well, it's divided by 2, so it's 2 divided by 2. Well, it's just 1. So for this sequence, this would be an exponential function that represents it. Because in the first term, put a 1 here, 2 to the first power is 2. Put a 2 here, it's 4. Put a 3 here, it's 8. That's kind of how it works. So I need my initial value, and I need my base, or my uh, common ratio, whatever you want to think of it in this case. So the first part is super easy. What's the initial value? Well, it's the first thing. That's why it's called the initial value. Just make sure you put your negative in there. It's negative 9. For the other part, there are a couple ways that you could deal with it. The thing about 1 third being a um, fraction in terms of the base is that the number itself, if you keep adding it up, like if you go from 2 to 3 to 4 here, the actual number value will be going, or the absolute value of the number will be going down. This graph would look a little bit like, say negative 9 is here, it'll look a little bit like this. Whereas if I had a positive number here, a big number, it would actually go way up. But when a fraction is the base, you tend to move towards this x-axis and then just kind of peter out there at the end. So what I'm going to do is think, okay, well this is going to make it go down, so I want to know the relationship between uh, negative 9 and 1 third, just to give me a guesstimate, and then I could just start substituting. I'm just going to look at it in my head, and you don't have to do this, you can just skip to the next part, um, is think about, okay, so negative 9, or 9 itself is 3 to the second power, 1 third is 3 to the negative 1 power. So I'm just going to look and see how far apart these things are. Well. 2 minus negative 1 is 3. So that's what I'm going to start out with when I try my substitution. I'm going to try this substitution. Negative 9 times 1 third to the third power. Because I'm trying to get negative 1 third, and as I said, as the number goes up here, it will actually increase the value. Because this is a fraction, that happens. If I went negative, it would actually make the number bigger. And that's us. I'm trying to get to a small number here. That's my ultimate goal. So I'm going to try that substitution. Let me load up this thing right here, because the calculator they give you is awful So most of the time. So negative 9 times 1 third. And I'm going to raise that to the third power, just to see what happens. And there it is, negative one third. So I, all I need to do is say it's to the third power. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm substituting in. So let me just clear that out. And then I'll put my three right there. And there it is, correct. Same thing here. What's my initial value? My initial value is two. And in this case, it's a little bit different. I need to think like, oh man, 54, say what now? Uh, so I'm going to start looking at, you know, just sort of the relationships between these things. If I have a one-third here, so this is going to look a little bit like start here 
and it's just going to go down like this. So if I want to get to a big number, I know that this needs to be negative. So I'm going to start thinking about, you know, what's the deal with 3? Well, I know 3 to the third power is 27, and 27 times 2 is 54. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to guess that if I did 2 times 1 third to the negative 3, that might work. And if it doesn't work, I mean, you know, I'm probably closer than I would be by just doing nothing. So at least I have an idea of where to start. You could, I guess, skip the logic a little bit and still get this question right. That's sad. There it is. So all I'm going to do is go in and type in negative 3 and get it correct. And this will say I'm finished. I'm going to try to do one more. Just see if there's any more that aren't being a different style. Uh, what is the common ratio of the exponential function for this? They're just asking for a different thing, really. They're saying, okay, 54 fifths, this is our initial value. And then you have 3 to the n power. Now, before I said this is the. Um, the base, but in this case it also happens to be the common ratio. I didn't know these, they would ask this question, but I, did, I am glad that I gave that long-winded explanation, so it did matter, I guess, in the end of all things. And then what is the value of the g sub n when n is negative 4? So if they want to know, if they say g sub n is this, then you have to figure out what number goes in place. But in this case, they just want to know what happens when I substitute in negative 4 as an exponent. And the quickest way to get that is just to try it. You could do these in your head too if you were didn't really like your life. Uh, 3 to the 4th you would just do, and it, since it's negative, it would be 1 over 3 to the 4th power and then 3 to the 4th power is, of course, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. I think I said enough times. So 1 over 81, and you would treat that with a 54 over 5. But I'm not going to do that, because why would I? And you want to change that into a decimal if you can. There it is, or a fraction 2 or 15. And there it is, correct answer. So depending on what type of question they ask you, pay attention to whether they ask you for the initial value, and if they do, it's the thing in the front. If they ask you for common ratio, they want to know what the base is, and just put that here. And then for the second part of the question, if they're saying which value of x makes this function equal this, you'll have to figure out what value to substitute in there, and that's the number you put there. And if they say, what is the value of this when this, substitute in and just give them the answer. So that's how you do interpret formulas of basic exponential functions on Khan Academy.